Fluffuse is heading to prove it, the flagship event for industrial automation. And this year, we're building something really interesting. But instead of waiting for everyone to see it after Prove It, I thought it would be more interesting to show you the build process from day one. Hey there, I'm Christopher Sandoval. I'm the Developer Relations Advocate here at Flowfuse. And today I'm excited to welcome you to the first video in a series of videos I'm calling The Road to Prove It 2026. All right, let's dive right into part one. Okay, so let's start by talking about what Prove It actually is. So Prove It is the ultimate in put up or shut up. Everyone that comes to Prove It gets the same real world spec, the same data, and then we all build our own solutions on top of that to prove the value of our implementation. So Prove It is really a chance to do exactly that, to prove it. And I think we have a pretty interesting series of demos that are going to do exactly that. So one of the best things about Node-RED and Flowfuse is that it can be your 1% solution or your 99% solution. And what I mean by that is that if you already have a factory and you have 99% of it set up, but you need help with that one very particular thing, well, you can build that in Node-RED and Flowfuse. But if you don't have anything built and you don't know where to start, well, you can build everything in Node-RED and Flowfuse. So what I'd like to do is basically put together three demos that show you the story of data from level zero in the ISA 95 model all the way through to level four. I think it would also be interesting to drop in two bridge devices to connect the data from each level to each level, because that's the reality of most factories. Not everything is done with just one vendor or one provider. You often have legacy systems, bridge connectors, all of these different systems that need to play together nicely. Now, the first thing that we have in play is an MQTT broker. And this broker is basically our simulated data source that represents the level zero in our ISA 95 model. Now, before we go any further, we should briefly talk about this. The ISA 95 model basically breaks things down into level zero through four, with level zero being the production process, the sensors and signals, and then level four being the sort of most abstracted away. Now, this model does have some problems, but I think it's a good way to represent our data flow from the closest to our production source to our most abstracted. So in this case, we'll consider our MQTT to be our level zero. Now, our next level is going to be level one and two. And the reason I wanna merge these two levels for this demonstration is what we're doing with the data is actually represented both in level one and level two. So after level one and two, we'll install some sort of bridge device, and then we'll get into level three. Now at this level, we're going to be showing a bunch of manufacturing operations management functions, and then we're going to take that data to another bridge device, and then finally push it to level four. Okay, so this is our basic layout. Now this might seem overly simplistic, but doing this kind of work before you do any project is actually really important. You have to remember that a lot of the work that you do at the beginning of a project is actually going to reduce the work you have to do in the back half of the project. When you're trying to troubleshoot specific instances or implementations, and you don't have a diagram to reference, well then you're not going to be able to really understand where all the data is flowing to and from. So to that end, we should flesh out this diagram. Let's consider all of the devices that we want to add to the system. Now, I'm not going to get into the actual demonstrations quite yet, but I think anyone who's been following Node-RED and Flowfuse, as well as my work in this space, will know that we've spent a lot of times on MCP or a model context protocol, some agentic implementations, some data transformation and portability, and the ability to merge data about your factory with the actual physical data that's being generated by that factory. We're essentially talking about deeper and wider observability, as well as granular control over individual processes. So to that end, let's talk about our network configuration. So the first thing that we're going to want to install here is an enterprise gateway. We're just bringing our data from MQTT into our local network. But you see a lot of people are going to be working on this network. And that means that network availability is going to be a concern. So what we can do in that case is install a cellular failover system. What this will essentially do is take our access point from our wireless network and turn it into a physical connection. But we'll also install a SIM card that will give us LTE or 4G, 5G network connectivity. That way, if the core network that we're connecting via an access point to fails, we can fail over to our own network and continue getting our data stream. Now we're also going to want to have some physical devices connected to our level one and two. And that brings us to a really interesting conundrum. You see, in this space, there's something called the ITOT divide. And so you have this problem of having to connect direct electrical systems with network cables and other abstracted systems. So to that end, we're going to use two separate Rio devices. We'll pull our MQTT data through our cellular failover into our enterprise gateway and into our first Rio device. Now that first Rio device is going to collect all of our MQTT data, as well as all the signals from our physical devices. And then it's going to send that data on to a secondary Rio device, which is going to do a lot of orchestration and management. Now all of that data is going to be pushed back out to the bridge. Now in order to do some more complex functionality here, I think at level three, we should install a server. Now by putting the server here, we can do a lot of things. 
we can do work order adjustments, we can do database storage, we can do all sorts of complex functionality and orchestrate functionality at other layers. Now, in order to take all of this information and push it to a display so people can see the demonstration that we're going to do, our best bet is going to be to deploy some industrial computers like an OnLogic device. Now, these OnLogic devices can host their own Node-RED instances and FlowFuse instances and other complex systems. And in this case, we're going to use it not only to connect to our Node-RED and FlowFuse instances, but also to drive the display for our monitors that are going to be attached to the demonstrations. And this way we can power things like MCP while also giving a dashboard view for people to look at. Now, one thing that I'll note at this stage is that we can actually consider some things that may feel like they're hardware specific, but are in actuality also software specific. Let me give you an example. We have our failover system here that'll default to a cellular network if our internet goes down. But regardless of that network connectivity, we're still generating data from our physical devices. And in that case, we want some way to sync up that data with the data that we get when our connection is reestablished. And in fact, we want some way to make sure that we're storing data and then forwarding that data once we have updated fresh information. Now we can accomplish this with some hardware caches and some other solutions, but I think our best solution in this case is actually a software solution. You see, Flowfuse has a blueprint for store and forward. Now what the solution will allow us to do is make sure that if connection is cut on either end, either on the network side or the server side, we can store and forward that data so that when connections are re-established, we push that data out to wherever it needs to go. Now again, this could be accomplished with a much more complicated physical caching solution, but by doing it this way, we can actually make sure that the software itself is in the loop and is managing all of that. We have a much easier way to deploy it, it's very easy to resolve it, and hey, it doesn't cost us any more money. Now this is just one example, but I think this demonstrates really well the idea that some problems that feel hardware specific can actually have software solutions if you just think about it a different way. All right, so we have our plan. Next time we're going to be getting into the physical wiring and the actual devices that are going into this demo. I have a feeling I'm going to be knee deep in hardware in relatively short order. So if you're into hardware at all, you definitely don't want to miss the next episode. This has been Christopher Sand of All of Flow Fuse. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give us a like, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see you in the next edition of The Road to Prove It 2026.